Hello and welcome to the Long Island Weather Update. It's 10 o'clock on April the 8th, 2024. I hope you all got a chance to see the partial eclipse. And I have a satellite image that's kind of bugging out a little bit, but you can see the eclipse there. So you can see the clouds kind of coming in and then the eclipse. We're going to actually pull this out a little bit here uh, and uh, get the CONUS view, which will probably take a little while to load. Um, We'll have to go up to the, again, we want to actually gonna have to go to like 96 frames or something like that. You know what it's going to take. I don't know why this satellite site is so darn slow loading. But first, I'll show you some of the pictures. I already have a video up. So obviously, I watched it from the Pines in the usual spot in Deer Park. Exactly the same spot I uh, did it last time. Uh, we had that one in 2017. And you could see just how dark and eerie everything looked uh, with the lights. And the, the everything had like a reddish cast to it almost very unusual uh you know and uh it was dark it got dark you could see in these pictures i mean maybe it doesn't do it justice but it got dark and these clouds string were very strange too uh that we had around i guess they were getting affected you could see there was almost a look at that a partial halo in this cloud here uh from uh from the eclipse and then here's the picture of the actual eclipse here uh that's at that that was at 90 percent this one's a, it's taken a little, a little bit earlier, like when it was like 80% coverage. Uh, but you can see there's the moon blocking the sun. Um, and here's another look at it. Uh, and hopefully you'll watch that video that I took. Uh, but it was pretty darn amazing, let me tell you. And then later on, we got another treat. This strange shower just came in from the west uh, around 6.30. Uh, it never reached the ground, but... Uh, really created some very strange and unusual clouds in the sky. And I wonder if the eclipse may have had something to do with it. you got to remember, you're blocking the sun. That's going to have an effect on the weather. Uh, and that's exactly what you're seeing here. It's it's pretty amazing. Look at that. I mean, that's that's incredible. I wish it was somewhere a little more like at a lake or something. But uh, this is uh, the kind of clouds we saw. I was worried the rain would come. But I, you'll see I have a video of that, too. So I have videos of all of that. Uh, so it was all pretty amazing, uh, I got to say. So there's the eclipse. Let's watch it on the satellite. You can see they got the path drawn out. Uh, and again, we're missing some data here, but um, let's see. You'll let it go again. There it is. Watch it go. There it is. You can see it on the satellite image. So you know that's going to have an effect on the weather. Uh, that's, the, that's the thing. You're blocking the sun. You know it's going to affect the weather. There it is one more time. Uh, and you can see the clouds, the arc of clouds from that system that's... Uh, that's uh, in the Midwest right now. Um, so all very, very, very amazing. Not a whole lot going on across the country, as you see. Uh, we're going to talk a little more about the eclipse because I want to go go and look at some, uh, look at what it, show you what it looked like on some of these uh, cameras here. Let's go to the uh, New York one, and I believe it is um, Adirondack cams. You're going to see how dark it got over here, all right? So, and it got dark, all right? Let me show you how dark it got. Obviously, it's nighttime there, but let's go here. We'll go to uh, 3 to 4, all right, and get a chance to see. Loading that up, all right, so this is 1518. You can see it's starting to get dark, but not quite tot totality yet, but watch it. Out. Watch how dark it gets when totality hits. You can also see there's a ring around the sun. Look at that. Unfortunately, I wish that camera was pointed a little bit higher. Uh, you can't see the sun, but you'll see it get dark as totality comes into view here. There you go. Look at that. It's dark, and it gets dark. There you go. It's pretty much almost nighttime here. Um, I mean, you can see it looks like twilight. That's just crazy. Um, so that's how dark it got uh, in the areas that had this eclipse. It was, it was really impressive to see. Um, very, very impressive to see. Um, not, you know, where you got the totality, obviously, it was pretty, pretty amazing, uh, to say the least. Uh, uh, and there were some other areas that got totality, too. And again, if we look at our um, sort of see where, yeah, let's see, we're looking at the MODIS satellite. I think you can see where the eclipse is in this satellite. So it's right now over the Great Lakes area. It looks like Michigan or somewhere where it's kind of dark over there. Let's see where it is here. All right, this one, you can see it's over Mexico. So you notice how everything gets like a, a reddish tinge where, where the sun is eclipsed? I mean, that's pretty cool. And you can see here, it's kind of dark over here. Actually, it looks like they had clear skies in Illinois. Um, let's see Chicago. Let's see what it looked like in Chicago. They got a decent amount of Chicago cameras here. Let's uh, see if we can find uh, what it looked like here. 
Right, let's see. Two now. It might have been a little bit earlier there. It's more like two to three probably there. I don't know what what time the eclipse hit that area at. It still looks like full sunlight. They got a nice clear sky. Lucky them. Yeah, it's getting darker now. Yep, getting darker. Still getting darker. I don't know if they had the total in Chicago. I don't think they had the total. I think they just had a partial. Um, so you may not see all that much there. Doesn't look like it. Um, yeah, you're not going to see that much there. I think it was further to the south, the path. Uh, further to the south. It wasn't in Chicago. I think it was more like maybe Indiana. Some of the Indiana areas, like, well, let's check out this one here. I think they had clouds, though, over there. I think we'll take a look. Well, actually, nope. All right, so let's see. Start over over here. Indiana, let's see if we can see. Or right, there's one person watching it. I don't know where these places are, so I don't want to waste your time too much with these uh, cameras here. Looking at them. Oh, there it is. There it is. Look at how dark it's getting. Oh, look at how dark it's getting. Look at that. Wow, that's dark. Look at that. So they, it looks like they had a total. Yeah, so if you're in the total, it gets as dark as night. And you can actually see the stars. Um, so there you go. So Indiana. It looks like Indiana, actually. A lot of people are thinking Indiana is going to have cloudy skies. It actually turned out to be a good uh, a good spot to watch it. Look at that. That's uh, that's incredible. That's. I wish they'd have it pointed at the sun, you know. We could see. But there you go. I mean, very impressive. So you got, you got a chance to look. Well, let's see what those who, who got to enjoy the total eclipse got to see. Uh, now, the eclipse also ha obviously had an effect on the weather. So we're going to go look at some observations and show you when the eclipse happens, the temperatures drop, and it actually affects the weather. So uh, let's, let's look at Plattsburgh here, Plattsburgh International Airport. And you'll be able to see what happened when the eclipse took place. Because, uh, you know, the temperatures drop. There it is. That's the eclipse right there. You see on the chart? Is that the... Yep, that's it right there. You see how? Look at how far the temperatures dropped. This is the humidity drop, too. Wow, that's that's really crazy. So you can see the where the eclipse happened. So let's go here, take a look at it. And you'll see here... I don't know if that's... That might be something else. Well, that is showing the eclipse right here. They're showing some kind of change going on. Relative humidity goes way down. Temperature goes up, though. I don't know. Uh, let's see if it did, uh, had an effect or not. Um, temperatures in the 50s. It did drop a few degrees. It did drop. Notice the wind shifted, too. Or it went from southeast and then kind of shifted a little bit there. So that's kind of interesting that it has an effect on the weather. Um, and that's, that's another thing to look at. So if you look at some of these observations here. Uh, let's see, Rochester, I know, was a place that people were looking at as well. Obviously, had clouds, but let's see if we can get some observations from uh, Rochester here and see if we see a, a, an effect here from it. Obviously, they did have clouds, but you're still going to see an effect from it. Yeah, the temperature dropped by a few degrees. All right, it's not that dramatic, but if you have a full sunny, funny, sunny sky, let's, uh, let's, like I said, Indiana, for instance... I think the path was like somewhere over here, right? Let's take a look. Now, they had sunshine in Indiana, so let's take a look and see. If we can see what happened here. No, I don't see anything there. i got to find out where that path of totality was. Again, um, we got to have to go back to that satellite loop and uh, look at that and see where that path was. Watch the eclipse. Okay, so they do have the eclipses past... So this is the eclipse path right here. So let's see. We're gonna it's gonna overlay it. Of course, now we gotta wait for it to load again. I'm kind of just trying to remember where it, where it was just to show you the. All right, there it is, right there. So all right. So this part of Indiana, more like southern Indiana, uh, got into it. So let's see if we could find uh, go to observations here. Where is it? All right, southern Indiana. So we gotta go um, over here. Okay, here we go. Like Madison, for instance. Let's all uh, look at this. I just want to show you the effects to, with the weather here. Oh, yeah, this was dramatic. So it was in the mid-70s, and then it dropped to 68, uh, and then it went back up again. So that, that's this is the effect the eclipse has. It has an effect on the weather. It really is a substantial effect, and uh, it, 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 it definitely changes the way the weather patterns are. Let's go to uh, Maine next. 
And Millinocket, that's another area that got into the eclipse. And let's see what, the, what kind of effects they had from it. I see a lot more observations at this site, so this will be interesting. All right, so here you go. You're in the mid-60s, and then look as the temperature drops into the upper, into the mid-50s. Actually, that's a decent drop in temperature right there. So look at that. Wow, that's, that's impressive right there. And that's your drop in temperature as the eclipse takes place. It's really, really very, very interesting. It really is. Uh, I mean, let's let's look at some of these cities in Texas where it's a little hotter. We might actually have a more dramatic temperature drop um, in some of these other areas where the sun is stronger. Uh, you have southern Illinois, too. We could look at southern Illinois as well. So let's look at that. I mean, this is all very, very interesting to see. So let's look at southern Illinois. All right, let's take a look and see if we can see any effects here. No, they didn't, they didn't get into totality, I don't think. Got to go to the areas that have totality um, to see the best effects. All right, let's see uh, where that map is. Let's look at that map again. All right. Texas. Okay, center of Texas. So let's go here. The center of Texas, probably like, uh, yeah, Plano. Maybe we can look at Dallas, for instance. See, I know they had a lot of clouds around. We'll see. Maybe it didn't really affect them that much. Oh, it did. The temperature dropped. There you go, 75 degrees. There, it dropped. So there you go. I kind of showed you uh, what this eclipse did to the weather. It was really very, very, very interesting, uh, to say the least. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look at our weather right now here on Long Island. The temperatures are... Depending on where you are, if you're stuck in the middle of the island, your temperatures are still around 50. If you're on the south shore, you're enjoying some upper 40s. Uh, and we'll take a look at what the we'll take a look at Islip and see how if we have any effects effects on the weather here. Um, probably not so much. Let's see. Um, yep, we did. There's a couple of degree temperature drop right there. So you see, we're in the upper 50s. I'm sure, at 59 uh, or, or at uh, three o'clock, and then look. Around when we had the 90% temperature drop to 55 degrees, and then it went back up again. So that's another example of what I'm talking about there. So even with a partial, you see an effect on the weather. It's really very interesting. Very interesting. Let's see uh, how New Jersey fared with this, because I have a feeling New Jersey also had, and I know it was much warmer there, so the effect might be more noticeable. Let's uh, take a look and see what they, what happened there. Uh, yep. Yep, they were in the 60s, and then it dropped to the 50s when the eclipse happened. And it went back up a little bit. It looks like they had a sea breeze, so then we have to go a little further inland. Let's go to Port Jervis. Yeah, we'll go to yeah, we'll look at High Point, New Jersey. This is an airport, but uh, this is not an airport, but it should still show the same effect. All right, so we're in the 60s, and then as the sun was getting covered, it dropped into the 50s. So, yeah, you could see these temperature drops uh, that occur when you have this eclipse. It's very, very interesting. So I had to spend some time talking about that because that's really cool. Uh, so let's take a look at our highs for today and high temperatures. Well, pretty much everybody got into the mid-60s today, even, uh, in, even most of Long Island did, except right on the south shore. Uh, and then uh, upper 60s in, in uh, mid-60s mid in, in Jersey. And then even some upper 60s. Looks like that's 70 right around Newark, of course, always the hot spot. Uh, let's go look at the lows. Obviously, we're above normal today, so lows. Mid-30s, 26 at West Hampton, so they did get some radiational cooling. City holding on the 40s, and then, uh, yeah, it did get chilly in the morning. 25, dropped to 25, so there was some radiational cooling because we did have clear skies and light winds last night. So that's not a surprise. Um, so uh, there you go. Let's go look at the climate statistics for the day. Load this all up. So ice slip got up to 63 degrees, the low, uh, and the low is 35. So 8 degrees above normal for the high, 4 degrees above below normal for the low. That puts us 2 degrees above normal for the day. And Central Park got up to 69 degrees. Yeah, very warm in the city, apparently. So they got close to 70 in the city. Uh, and there, uh, there it's 10 degrees, 10 degrees above normal for the high, and 5 degrees uh, above normal for the day. Uh, so, yeah, well above normal. No surprise. We'll I'll go ahead and look at Newark. 
which made it to 69 as well. So, uh, yeah, very, very warm day today. And you can see, yep, there are a few showers out there on the radar. And again, that shower I showed you, where the showers are dissipating now. It was some kind of warm front or something that was creating these showers. But uh, we'll go ahead and we'll look at the Ventu sky and uh, rewind the radar and show you what was going on again. This really interesting shower. So this is like, I don't know if this was a, th uh, this, this definitely was convective in nature. Right around 6, you could see it getting closer. Uh, and it, rain did reach the ground in some areas, but it kind of fell apart when it got to Long Island. And the rain just kind of stayed aloft at this point uh, when that shower passed. So not too much in the way of that. So uh, let's look at some more. I actually want to look at some more observations. Uh, so let's look at Central Park and see if there was an effect there at Central Park as well for the eclipse. We don't have too, as many observations here. Uh, yep, 66 at 3 o'clock. Or 251, it dropped to 63 at 351, and then back up to 66 again. And then you can see light rain being reported with that uh, shower that did move over New, um, New York City. So, yeah, all very impressive. Yes, we've got uh, coastal flood advisories uh, because of the tides. And this is something that's happening more and more. We don't even have a storm out there, and we've got coastal flood advisories. Jersey, also coastal flood advisories as well. So um, we're still watching that as well. So let's look at Wonder Map. Yeah, I actually want to look at a few more weather stations uh, and see um, the effects of this eclipse. I know it's going to be a long weather update. And we're going to be talking about the effects of this eclipse because, again, from a meteorological standpoint, point is very interesting. All right. Uh, so let's look at, let's find a station here. And we'll just, you know, pick, we'll pick a half hollow hills, for instance, to right. And we'll see if we can see if there there's a dip where that eclipse happened because there is a yeah there's a little dip right there not not too substantial but you definitely see it you definitely see it but the the thing is we had a sea breeze so it kind of messed up our our normal pattern so we have to go more inland away from the sea breeze to really uh, get a better look at it so let's go up toward uh, Orange County New York and let's see probably we'll see a little more and show you what the partial did here. Uh, uh, yeah, there it is. There's that dip right there. You can see it. But, again, the full eclipse is where you're going to see the bigger dips. So, again, if you go up to, like, Plattsburgh, where they had the full eclipse, the, the total eclipse. Plattsburgh. We'll pick a station around Plattsburgh here. And uh, you'll see it'll probably be more, way more impressive, that drop in temperature. Let's see. Yep, there it is. Look at that. There's it. You that's what happens when you take the solar radiation away. <laughs> and notice that the wind drops, too. The wind drops because the sun creates wind. And when the sun isn't shining, the wind calms down. And then when the sun came back out, the wind started back up again. It's amazing, isn't it? It really, really is. It really, really is. It's truly amazing. So uh, I know I've talked about this a lot. When are we gonna <laughs> All right, let's talk about what we have coming up. You can see, first of all, looking at Long Island, yeah, temperature's low 50s here, but if you're on the south shore, it's much cooler. And I noticed the difference right away. So on the south shore, I feel like I can breathe. I get back to this area, I feel like I'm warm, I'm sweating, there's no breeze. <sighs> you know, this is why I needed to be on the south shore. It's just too damn hot here. Well, anyway, let's shift gears and talk about what we have coming up. So uh, you can see there's a little bit of a warm front. That might have been what's touched off the showers. That's going to bring in warmer air, and then we've got this mess of a system for the... Uh, Wednesday into Thursday uh, deal where it's going to bring more rain again. Uh, so uh, let's go look at the GFS model now. I'll close all this other stuff down. So um, you can see that we stay fair tomorrow. We'll probably have high clouds. And then Wednesday, we're going to start to see those shower chances creep in. Uh, but it is Thursday uh, that we're going to be dealing with the rain. And you can see here we got it. Actually, it looks like now the rain's going to hold off until Thursday night, maybe into the early part of Friday now. So it's, it's being a little slower, but you can see another big, immense storm system uh, that's going to bring rain uh, for us and then improving conditions by the weekend. And I'm going to go over the week's weather, I think, a little more tomorrow. Uh, let's talk about uh, tomorrow night because we want we spent a lot of time on the eclipse. and we got a very warm day coming up for tomorrow. So let's go to the HRRR now and take a look at... Um, obviously, I don't think we'll be seeing any more shower activity. Tomorrow we'll, we'll feature sun and high clouds. Uh, our next chance of showers is going to be probably Wednesday morning, though. It's just a chance. It's just a chance. Be very widely scattered. Um, dew points and wind flow. So let's take a look at this because this is kind of important. 
uh, when it comes to how warm we're going to get tomorrow. So you can see the wind's going back to the west tonight. Uh, and then uh, tomorrow we do have light winds to begin, and then they turn subtly. So there should be a sea breeze tomorrow. Again, humidity is fairly low. Dew points are fairly low. And then as we get into Wednesday, we get that easterly flow setting up. It almost looks like it's trying to form like a low pressure area over us or whatever. But it looks like, again, you can see much warmer air off to the southwest trying to make its way in. Uh, much more humid air, I should say, trying to make its way in. Also warmer, probably. So looking at temperatures tonight, not going to drop too much. Probably lows, mid-40s. And then tomorrow is going to be very warm. Everybody, I think everybody makes it to the 70s tomorrow. In Jersey, you're going to probably get the mid, maybe even upper 70s. Uh, and this as well as the city of Long Island, we'll see at least low 70s in most areas. And then the temperatures will start dropping on the south shore in the afternoon to the 60s. Um, and then we'll see that drop kind of progress inland. And, and, you know, as the sea breeze takes effects, the temperatures then drop into the 50s. Uh, and then by the night, we'll probably be down to the 50s again. And we'll see like a backdoor cold front deal kind of setting up for Wednesday, uh, where Jersey could be very warm, uh, and then we're going to be cool. So we're going to have this backdoor front over us for Wednesday. That's what it looks like it's showing here. Uh, and then, again, I'll draw it out. Got a little backdoor front right here. So you got a little backdoor cold front right here. So... Um, if you got, you know, when you got a backdoor front, sometimes you have to worry about fog and drizzle. And that's what we'll have to worry about for Wednesday, perhaps, along with some showers. Um, and we'll have a better idea of that tomorrow, how the how Wednesday is going to work out. At least this is showing a backdoor cold front, so it won't be all that warm on Long Island. Wednesday will wind up being cooler than Tuesday. We'll probably only be in the 50s. That's the case. Let's see if the GFS is showing the same thing. GFS is showing the same thing to some extent as well. Um, so let's go ahead and look at sky cover. Um, go to the R gem for that. So tomorrow we will have plenty of sun, but there will be high clouds and probably some jet junk around from time to time. So it won't be a nice blue sky, but there will be plenty of sunshine. Uh, and the high clouds will actually be thinner than they were today, but there could be more jet junk around. Um, and then obviously the clouds are going to roll in for Wednesday. So I think that's going to wrap up this Long Island weather update. Have a good night. Thank you for watching, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the eclipse today.